Hello ladies and gentlemen, Teveron here and welcome back to West of Loathing where we are doing handstands on a lantern and exploring the lost Dutch oven mine. In fact, we've picked up some new things just recently, a sulfur match, which does one hot damage. I've got a match. Your face in the face of somebody who owns at least one matchstick. All right, and some more dynamite. I don't think I've used dynamite so far in combat. I might want to just try that out just to see what it does. Uh, oh, we got a can of oil. Let's oil the rusty elevator mechanism and ride down. So what is the deal with this place? You emerge from the elevator into a deeper shaft by the light of your lantern, you see exposed meat veins on nearly every surface. It's unusual that there would be this much readily available meat left in a working mine. What were they digging for if not this? That is very curious, isn't it? Well, we shall certainly mine the meat veins. Nice, get our mine spleen and bonus too. A little bit of XP on the side. Oh, there's a goatee dude dancing. Uh, I'll come back to you in a second. I want to finish mining all this meat. Oh, uh, what's what's up? What's up with you, buddy? You, you having a little dance party down here all by yourself? This guy is totally out of it. He's gibbering and drooling and doesn't seem to even see you. Uh, try talking to him. Uh, hey, buddy, are you OK? Uh, huh. You wave your hand in front of his face, but he doesn't react at all. That's, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Sure. Shovels dulled to uselessness. I didn't know that that was possible. A broken pickaxe? Was one of the miners digging with his helmet? Oh, I'm getting some Event Horizon vibes here. Ugh, looks like a miner died trying to dig deeper with their hands. Right. Oh, I can't go up by it. <laughs> okay, an ominous ladder leading down into a deep, dark pit. What could possibly go wrong? Ooh, a diamond? Or a gem? Smells pretty terrible. Extract it. Effluvious emerald. If this gem is half as valuable as it is pungent, you're in the money, and you should probably wash your hands before you spend it. Worth 500 meat, that's awesome. We got some meat nuggets to uh, to sell too. The finger bones are all splintered. You start to feel very uneasy. Ooh, hello. This pile was pretty obviously made on purpose. Closer inspection reveals that the stones are mortared together. What could be hidden in here? We got all the options in the world. Let's talk the rocks into leaving. You are one smooth talker. 22 experience. Yes, I am. Um, what is this? There's a trapezoidal piece missing from this weird crossbar thing. Guess we don't really have anything to go in that. All right. These scratches are painted on in blood. The hair on the back of your neck stands up. This is a creepy place. There are still bits of fingernail in these gouges. Your heart is pounding. Um, let's get out of here. Thing is, where to next? Apparently we need a trapezoidal thing to put in that Stonehenge looking contraption down there. So once we find that, we can maybe come back here and do that, but hmm. I guess we can just go to Gustafsson Gulch. We leveled up quite a bit, so let's see if we can take these goblins out. You spot an astonishingly large horse apple in the distance. You are literally astonished by the size of it. It is very large. You discovered a new map location, the Big Apple. <laughs> you know what? Go there. I want to see the Big Apple. 
As you reach the center of the clearing, you are simultaneously struck with a profound awe and a terrible stench as you discover the largest road apple you've ever seen. You can't even imagine how this got here. Was it a giant horse? Was it 200 normal-sized horses acting collaboratively? They... they should have sent a poet. Well, I'm sort of a poet. I... ooh. Okay... It doesn't smell any better up close. We can clean it up. Experience. Is this just another experience? No, it got smaller. Made a little dent in it. Let's clean this up. Come on. Get it done. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for the fanfare there. That was That was cool. Is that all there is to this? <laughs> you got anything to say, Alice? You know, I'm sure there are more fun ways to get a little exercise. Yeah. Probably, but that gave us quite a bit of experience. So, do we go ahead and raise Intimidating again? Or do we, as I had planned, go ahead and raise our base stats some more? Huh. I think I'm going to go ahead and raise our base stats just a little bit more. Let's go, let's go ahead and put a point. Let's take muscle to where it's costing 100. Well, it's now 120. That'll do. Uh, mysticality. Go ahead. Um, let's do moxie as well. And that's all the experience that we've got to spend. Uh, we'll get all of these to where they're at least costing 100. And then we'll start working on our skills again. Unless something comes up that we need one of these to pass a check of some sort. All right, uh, let's head on to Gustafsson Gulch. And we're interrupted again. You find a flyer for a dynamite store up north. It's charred around the edges like it got blown here by an explosion. You mark the address on your map. You discover a new map location, Dynamite Dan's Discount Dynamite Dare House. Woo! Let's go. This... Definitely looks like a dynamite dare house. Hello. Oh, you can sell me a year's supply of dynamite. Well, I plan on getting a year's supply for free, my friend. But in the meantime, you are perfectly free to buy some of these things that are... Well, that one doesn't just say it's just for sale, does it? The meat nuggets do, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, just sell it. So I'm not going to sell anything that doesn't say just sell it. So let's get rid of these because there may be other uses in the game and I want to do things the interesting way if possible. Let's see. Tainted milk we haven't been allowed to drink yet. Maybe we'll get to that point eventually. All right. And that's basically it for the just sell this type stuff. I've got enough dynamite on me to be getting on with. So uh, let's see if we can actually get to the gulch without being interrupted, but we can't, of course. Off to the side of the trail, you spot a beer barrel cactus. You're not sure why they call them that, since they're shaped like mugs and not barrels. Well, barrels and mugs are sort of the same shape. Gather some beer. Sure. And we're here at last. Uh, hello. A fancily dressed goblin steps forward. Hi, hello. Being a mayor, welcome. Now going away, please. The goblin seems friendly, but blocks your entry to the gulch. Uh, let's goblin tongue him. And I didn't realize till after I said that how dirty that sounded. Can I not coming in? Sorry, only for goblins being very private. Oh, we can intimidate him. You roll up your sleeves to show your bulging arm muscles. The goblin is either unimpressed or doesn't recognize the menace in the gesture, so you pick him up and toss him over the wall of the gorge. <laughs> okay, cool. I, At least we didn't kill him, I guess? The sign says, Nothing interesting in goblin. Which, as far as I can tell, is English just in a Yoda-esque sort of uh, sentence structure. You hear a quiet rustling as though a single goblin were rummaging through a crate filled with straw. Go in and beat the straw out of it. Um. 
I have yet to meet anything that a good one, two, three doesn't take care of, so... You made that trigger-happy goblin trigger-sad instead. You dig through the crates the goblin was rummaging through, but there's nothing interesting in any of them. Rats. Where is the dynamite? Library. You listen at the door. It's quiet inside. It should be. Maybe they've got skill books. The shack is filled with crude bookshelves. The bookshelves, in turn, are filled with crude books. Three titles catch your attention. So very complicated numbers. How to bird noise. Alice going into a singing glass. Well, that one seems familiar. Uh, let's read the math book. All you can tell about this book is that it concerns extremely high-level mathematics. You don't have the vocabulary to understand any of it, and probably still wouldn't if it was written in English. Your brother would probably love it. Uh, okay. How to bird noise. This book is an extremely detailed treatise on the sounds that different birds make. You probably wouldn't expect to learn how to do an accurate great crested greby greba impression from a book, but that's how detailed it is. Hmm. Uh, Alice Through the Looking Glass? This popular children's novel has been translated into Goblin. Jabberwocky still reads pretty much the same. Oh, it brillig being and toves of slithering did and a wobby gyring and also gimbling. Uh, goodbye, library. We'll, we'll leave Lewis Carroll to his own devices. Storage? Uh, no sound. Check it out. Filled with thousands of tiny cabinets, each labeled with a number in Goblin. Look in a random drawer. Goblin Gulch Lollipop. Nothing in the drawer, but you find an old lollipop stuck to the bottom of the drawer above it. Keep looking. Look even... Look in an even more random drawer. The drawer has a sandwich in it. It must have been filed under sandwich. Goblin Gulch Sandwich. Keep looking. Look in an even randomer drawer. Well, this one contained a rolled up pair of terrible pants. Goblin trousers. Ooh. Keep looking. Let's go through the list. Nothing of interest. Still nothing. And apparently that's all there is. Let's look at our treasures, shall we? Plus three armor, minus two moxie. No thank you. This is both a sandwich for goblins and a sandwich where the meat is goblin. They're cannibals? Increases your moxie by five for the rest of the day, but decreases muscle and mysticality. Another thing I'm not really interested in. The lollipop? This looks like a normal lollipop, but like all goblin-made items, it's messed up in some pretty fundamental ways. Increases mysticality by three, but reduces muscle and moxie for the rest of the day. Uh, well, that was a whole lot of nothing, I suppose. Oh, wait, no, gotta read the sign. A uh, delicatessen, really? You listen at the door, but don't hear anything. Check it out. Rats. Looks like the door is locked. Pick the lock. You make short work of the lock. You enter what turns out to be a delicatessen and help yourself to what turn out to be sandwiches, probably. More useless goblin sandwiches. Just what I always wanted. Uh, ignore. Red herring storage. <laughs> You hear a couple of goblins wrestling around in there. Sounds like they're doing something really important. Of course it does. They're dressed as wizards? Goblin Gulch Fish Wizard? They're both fish wizards. Um. Let's see. Uh, let's not do the one, two, three. Let's get beefy this time. Because we might need to attack twice with some good output. And then uh, we'll kill that guy. And we'll let her just do her thing. A special attack. Using mysticality, okay. Uh, well, let's beat him down. Excellent. You gave those fishmongering goblins what for? You look around the building, but it turns out to just be filled with rotting fish. Yep, we kind of expected that, I think. Mayor's house. Uh, check it out. He's not coming back anytime soon. The shack contains a bed and a desk. Uh, okay. Let's investigate the bed. It's made of cactus logs with a blanket of woven together cactus needles. That can't be comfortable. 
I mean, they are made out of fungus, right? So maybe it's okay for them? How about the desk? The desk is strewn with folders. You notice one that says important secrets. Uh, read it. You learn a variety of secrets, though the only one that's actually pertinent to your circumstances is that there's a spare key to the treasure cave in drawer 69105 in the storage hut. Nice. I wonder if I actually need that, though. Can I lockpick it for, you know, extra experience? Once we find where it's at? You press your ear to the door and hear somebody delivering what sounds like lines from Hamlet, except in goblin tongue. From this vantage point, you also notice a sign next to the door reading, Backstage Entrance, here it being, with an arrow pointing to the back of the building. Uh, so this is the theater? I thought I was trying to read the sign, but apparently I walked up to the door. Uh, head backstage. You sneak backstage and watch the play from behind a curtain. Not only is it a goblin version of Hamlet, it's also been rewritten as a one-man show. To be or not to be? Oh, that is a question. Could it be better thinking so suffer a crazy things and arrows? Or fighting so many bad things for stopping them being fighting? To dying? To sleeping? To sleeping hey? Dreaming maybe, but oh problems. If dreaming crazy when living, what dreams have after dying? Wow, pretty weird probably. Uh, keep watching? You watch for a while. The bits where the actor has to do a sword fight with themselves are pretty entertaining. Okay, well that's a, that's a cool 22 experience for no work on our part. A cafe, how big is this village? You listen at the door but don't hear anything. Uh, check it out. Looks like the door is locked. That's no problem for us. You enter what turns out to be a cafe and reconstruct a few cups of chicory from the leavings in various dirty cups and sinks. You stop to wonder why a cafe wouldn't be open at this time of day. You see a schedule posted on the wall and sure enough it says somebody named Gene is supposed to be working this shift. He always was a shiftless layabout, that Gene. Goblin chicory. Nice. So I noticed there when I picked that lock, we don't actually get experience for it. I was under the delusion, I suppose, that we do. Speed plus, but everything else down? Uh, not really into that sort of thing, I don't think. So let's go back and get that key, since we're not going to get experience for doing it. That, this is the storage. Check it out. We want the 69105 for the key. And we'll go back on our merry little way. Cafe, we were just in there. Guard barracks. You hear a bunch of gruff goblin voices gruffly griping at each other inside while well, head in guns a-blazing. Hello, you three. You look like the Three Stooges. Goblin, Gulch Goblin Cactus Jack, Gulch Goblin Cracker Jack, Gulch Goblin Flap Jack. All right. Let's start with our beef up and then we will take out this one I think got a two and three chance of getting that done and it worked and we'll let Alice just ping them for 11 which should bring them into range of our big bone or almost uh, go ahead and shoot there we go Make short work of these goblins. Uh, you win. That'd show them if they weren't dead now. Oh, we got another treasure key. So that's two. And 59 meat. Hooray. So we didn't need to get into the storage room after all. Ooh, foraging. More cactus beer. This sign says treasure cave. This door to remaining locked at all times in goblin. Sadly, this door is locked. Well, unlock it. That's why we have the key. Why are all these goblins locked in the cave? Are they doing a line dance? This goblin is paying more attention to their book, Goblet, than to you. But you're pretty sure you aren't going to just be waltzing on by. We can fight them, or we can spoil the ending. Hey, Goblet, good book. What thinking about Goratio is only surviving one at the end? Everyone else dying, poisoning, sorting. Pow, bam. Ah, no, wow, spoilers. 
The guard runs out of the cave with their hands over their ears. <laughs> Great. This goblin guard is whittling a little wooden bird call, but they're not too busy to beat you up if you try to get past them. Well, try out our new bird call skills we just learned. You duck behind a stalagmite and do your great crested griba impression. Oh, yes, a great crested griba, wow. The guard pulls a pair of binoculars out of his uniform and runs out of the cave. <laughs> this is awesome. Unlike the other two guards, this one is being very attentive and seems very suspicious of you. Also, unlike the other two guards, they have a name tag that says Gene. Well, Gene, we just happen to know you're late for your cafe shift. Hey, Gene, you're supposed to be working at the cafe today. You forgetting? Oh, wow. Oh, no. The goblin quickly takes off their guard uniform and puts on a cafe uniform and races out of the cave. Well, we've got by that without killing any goblins, though we did murder, you know, roughly half of the village. We're not going to talk about that. Oh, it's a rare and valuable treasure chest cactus. Pick the lock. Whoa, 1,297 meat. And now we have enough to go buy our silver turnip or pay to get the turnip we already have silver plated. Uh, this one isn't even locked. Holy Jesus. Are they all full of meat? Oh no, this is the year's supply of dynamite. Wow, sweet, we don't have to buy that. A cactusy treasure box, goblin engagement ring, and a goblin tiara. All right. Plus two armor, minus two moxie, no thank you. Plus five spell damage, minus three pistol attack damage. Again, no thank you. Dynamite, one year, is stenciled on this crate in an official-looking typeface. Contains enough dynamite for a whole year. I'm not going to open it. That would ruin the quest. What I am going to do is bypass the whole village and go get my turnip silver-plated. Hopefully, I don't live to regret it. You come across a goblin. What are the chances? Marching around in the woods. They're taller than a typical goblin, probably because their boots are taller than typical goblin boots. In fact, these boots are so tall, they must be half stuffed with socks to keep the tops from jamming the goblin in the groin. The goblin sees you and marches over, attempting to look intimidating instead of awkward. Hey, hey human, hey, what you're doing in this place? This is my ground to stomping. Do you mean this is your stomping grounds? What? Uh, talk to it. Your boots, which are very tall, I am seeing. Yes, tall boots to having, so also tall am I. That's cool, but they are uncomfortable seeming, very. I, for having no sensation in my feet now, so this is fine. Uh, established dominance, thank you, intimidating three. You think you're tall, huh? Well, the tall one here is me. Incorrect. Observing how tall I am. And yet, me, the taller one, is being. No, no, not. Yes, it is. Very well, I conceding you are the taller. Yes, where is a prize? Here is one. Got a guffin? Is that a MacGuffin? Perhaps? Is it food? A wad of some kind of goblin bread. Doesn't look very appetizing like a soft gray potato. Increases your nothing by zero for the rest of the day. Great, just what I always wanted. In reality, what I always wanted was a silver plated turnip. Let's go through all of these till he gives us the option. Uh, yes, plate the turnip. Please don't be a waste of 5,000 meat. He takes the turnip and gives it back in a short time later. Shiny and gleaming. Had to hollow it out in the middle so it wouldn't rot inside, but you can wear it now as a hat. Really, a turnip crown. Neat. Plus three muscle, plus three mysticality, plus three moxie. It's the same thing as that, but this one is a turnip. We gotta wear the turnip, right? It was a strange choice to silver plate this, but it's definitely one of the four shiniest turnips you've ever seen. And it's balanced such that you can wear it on your head. All hell the monarch of the turnips. Sweet. 
I wonder, can we double plate it and get the action point? The man grins, revealing a full set of silver teeth. Uh, can you plate my hat? You hand him your hat, and after a time, he hands it back. Apparently, uh, we can. Um, yeah, it's silver. It's double silver plated. Sweet. Just what I always wanted, a silver turnip hat. Okay, so let's go help out the railroad camp. Now that we're the foreman, that seems like the appropriate thing to do. Hey, buddy. Got your year's supply of dynamite. Any luck finding a year's supply of dynamite? The passengers are getting restless. Uh, yep, yeah, here you go. Good, perfect. This'll do the trick just fine. Hang back for a bit while I get the fellas to set up the charges, and I'll let you do the honors. Smee consults with the other workers, and they inspect the rocks for a time. Eventually, one of them shrugs, pushes the whole crate of dynamite up next to the rocks, and wires up a detonator. All right, let her rip. Um, don't we want a longer detonator cable? Nope. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Just give me a three count before you hit the plunger so I have time to climb under the train. Great. I'm sure this will not kill us at all. Completely dead in a big explosion. Let's do it. Um. Did you know there was a rock golem here? The surveyors didn't say anything about a crazy rock monster. Quick, you're the protagonist. Do something about it. All right. This will be our greatest challenge yet. There is a very large and very angry looking thing, guy, standing here. Apparently, it's a little peeved at having a year's supply of dynamite blown up next to its butt while it was sleeping. How are you going to handle this? We can fight. We can pulverize it with our muscle, or we can intimidate it. Let's intimidate it. We didn't spend that experience for nothing, did we? Oh yeah, you want a piece of this? You think you can handle this, gravel neck? Come on, bring it. I'll show you the meaning of cleavage, uh, in the geological sense. I'll smash you into pebbles and use you to line my driveway. And what's left over, I'll crush into cat litter and... Okay, okay, I get it, jeez. The monster stomps away, and don't you forget it. On a day's work. Are we turning into a pacifist? God forbid. Well, now that's as fine a day's work as I've ever seen. Much obliged, friend. We'll be getting the rest of the track laid down and head out now. Here, I'll mark your route. Here, I'll mark our route on your map for you, in case our paths happen to cross again. Well, you should do that since I'm your foreman, you know. Uh, Manifest Destiny Railroad Company Camp, a new one. Thanks, but can I just ride the train? Got a ticket? Ha! Huh, just kidding, of course you don't. Every seat on this train sold out. Sorry, boss. Thanks for nothing. We didn't even get paid. The remains of your triumph over that crazy rock pile slash guy. Ooh. It's a whole new area now that the mountains are blown open. Let's head on over there. Hopefully it's a little bit more of a challenge than this area was. As you're heading down the dusty desert trail, you sense an extremely powerful, extremely malicious cow presence nearby. You track its source to a nearby ranch. You discover a new map location, Hellstrom Ranch. Uh, we'll, we'll go there in a minute. Let's, let's keep on to the railway camp. Uh, yes? What do you say, Alice? There's another cemetery near here we ought to check out. A pretty big one named Reboot Hill. Okay, I'll add it to the itinerary. Sweet. Um, I guess I have to ask. Thanks for the reminder. See what's going on here. They're stopped again for whatever reason. That guy has stopped messing with his watch and started eating jelly beans? I want some jelly beans. What you got there, jelly beans? Yep. Can I have one? Nope. 
please? No, get your own. Where'd you get them from? A little way south of here, from a feller named Roy Bean. You discovered a new map location, Roy Bean's House of Justice and Jelly Beans. Sounds like a place we ought to visit. Still whistling to the beat of the band. Is that a binocular thing? It's one of those pay telescopes for tourists. This one was designed by a promising young artist named Edvard Munch. Or Munch. Use it? You pay your meat and look through the telescope at the big canyon. It sure is big. It'll take quite a bridge to get across that thing, that's for sure. Uh, so I guess that's what's holding everything up? You can't go too far in that direction. You'd fall off the edge of the giant cliff. No, oh, it won't even let me try. Oh, well. Howdy, boss. Howdy, Smee. Stuck again? Yep. We got ourselves one hell of a canyon to get across, and no materials for bridge building. Any ideas? Well, there's an old mine town up north called Breadwood. They open a lumber camp after the mines dried up. If you can fix the deal with them for the lumber we need, I can handle the engineering side of things. Okay, where is it? Thank you. Of course, anything you can find to build a bridge out of is fine by me, but that seems like the simplest option. I'll see what I can do. Can we harvest? Nope. No foraging allowed. Alright, well we got some stuff starting to open up over here. Where do we go first? Uh, let's follow what Alice wanted. We want to help her out in her quest. You see the familiar palisades of an army fort off in the middle distance. You swing Shadow toward it to see what it's called. Fort Memoriam. Uh, we'll go there later. Alrighty. Reboot Hill, eh? Don't worry, it's just paint. Is it? Are you sure? Are you sure it's not blood? There's the big gate entrance. Anything further this way? Or is this just going to be nothing at all? Strange, there's a keyhole in the trunk of this tree. Can, can we pick it? Do we need a special kind of key for that? keyhole in the trunk of this tree. Maybe one of these other trees has a strange wooden key? Um. Alright. Look around and see if there's any trace of that necromancer. I'll cover our backs. Right. You just hang out there, Alice. I'll do all the work. There's a ghost. Plot number one. Hello. Hello. You see the ghost of an elderly woman holding flowers. She seems lost and depressed, above and beyond what's expected for a ghost. Howdy, madam. Is there something I can help you with? Oh, it's awful. I can't remember. I can't remember it all. Let's start at the beginning, okay? Well, you see, I had four daughters. They married four brothers, the Smith boys. And after they each had... And after that, they each had five daughters of their own. Unfortunately, I outlived every one of the 24 of them. Um... You, uh, you, you know you're a ghost, right? Oh, yes. In fact, I died here in this graveyard where they're all buried. I came to visit them, and I suppose my poor old heart finally gave out. That's not the problem, though. Ninety-five years is a pretty good run, after all. So, what did you forget? I brought this bouquet of flowers to put on my favorite granddaughter's grave, but I can't remember which one of them was my favorite. I'm so ashamed, and I can't bear to leave until I've remembered. I see. Well, maybe I can help you figure it out. Oh, thank you. I'd appreciate that ever so much. No problem, madam. Can you remember anything about your granddaughter? Well, I'm kind of certain her first name ended in a vowel. Okay, anything else? I remember I was 40 when she was born. Oh, oh no, 37, or was it 42? It must have, it must have been somewhere in that range at least. Okay, so you're, you were 95 when you died. And she was born when you were between 37 and 42. Anything else? Oh, her first name was longer than her last name, just like mine. Anything else? 
I remember that she wasn't buried next to any of my daughters. Okay. It's a lot of information here. She sniffles a little. She passed at the same age as poor Becky, who was always in such ill health. Oh, that should help a lot. I'll be back in a minute. We may, we may need some more clues, but that Becky seems to uh, be a really good one. Little Becky. So Becky died at age 16. So we need someone who was 16 and whose first name is longer than the last name and ends in a vowel. Not that one. Well, that could be it. Except, uh, oh, wait. There's more than one Becky. But it's the Becky that was always in ill health, so probably the youngest one. So still 16? Maybe? Penelope Smith, who was not 16. Patricia Smith, who was also not 16. The first Becky Smith, who was a lot older than 16. Paula Smith, well it can't be her because her first name's not longer than her last name. Same with Fiona. God, they got so many of them. Lenore? Nope. Wait, Lenore, Lenore fits, doesn't she? 47 to 63 is 16 years, right? See, 57, yeah. Probably Lenore? Let's go see if that checks out here. I think I know who she was. Did her name start with an L? Granny's eyebrows raise hopefully. Was it L-E? Her eyes widen. Was it Lenore? Granny's face falls and she starts to cry. No, no, it wasn't her. Oh, I'll never remember. I'm sorry. I thank you for trying, but please leave me alone with my grief. Maybe I'll try again later. Darn it, I thought I had it for sure. So L-E is correct. Apparently, anyway. Fidelity? Oh, wait, what? Uh, dig the grave. You uncover a coffin that was apparently delivered by mail because it still has the address printed on it. Either that or this was a joke about somebody going to Hellstrom Ranch after they die. Hmm. Okay. So, we, we got nothing, I guess? Alright, maybe it's Leilani Smith? According to the years here, she would have been 15. However, depending on how the months fell, that could still be the same age as the Becky over here that we thought was 16. So let's try that. Too despondent. Oh, okay. So I have to try another day. Fair enough, I suppose. Rebecca Smith. Oh, there's more Smiths over here. Billy Spider McKinley. Turned out to be way more than one. Okay. Rebecca Smith. Well, maybe it's her. She said, poor old Becky who was sickly. Maybe that's not actually the case, like the fat guy being called Slim. Either way, I think we're going to call it here for this episode and pick up in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, let me know in the comments and by leaving a like below. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see more in the future. I have been Teferon, and until next time, friends, be excellent to each other.